over our next few minutes together, I'm gonna answer one of the most common questions photographers ask me about flash. What do I do when I have to shoot with flash in an orange barn? What's up, y'all? Welcome to Monday Magic. My name's Rob Green. I'm a photographer and educator based out of Fort Worth, Texas, and each week I'm here to give you tips, tricks, and inspiration to help you build your business, wow your clients, and make photo magic. And today we are going to be talking about flash. You might have heard my friend Rebecca Rice refer to me as the king of flash, and while I don't know if that nickname is really something that I merit, I have to admit it's kind of stuck. So. I'm here to just help you out figuring out your flash because I love to help photographers figure out how to take amazing flash photos that look like natural light. In fact, if you want to learn more from me after this video, there's a link below the video where you can sign up for a free one hour flash class with me where we're going to talk about three secrets to easily unlocking your flash's potential. But today, I want to hit on one of the most common questions I get from photographers about flash. How do I shoot? orange barn weddings with a flash. So here's how it goes. And this is gonna be hopefully so much simpler than what you're thinking because we've all been there before. You get so excited, you're shooting a wedding, you show up and you're like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? All the walls are orange, the ceiling's orange. Wedding venue owners, on behalf of the photography community, we're begging you, paint your orange barns white. We will love you for it. Your brides will love you for it. It'll be amazing. But photographers, in the meantime, what do we do when we get caught in an orange barn wedding situation? Well, like I said, I think this can be a lot simpler than we make it out to be. And so I'm gonna give you two ways you can still get great, clean looking light on your subject when you find yourself shooting in an orange barn. Now, to start this off, I love to connect the dots between flash and natural light because most of the time I find myself talking to natural light photographers who feel like all their knowledge gets thrown out the window the moment they start shooting with flash. But that's not the case. Everything we know about natural light applies when it comes to flash as well and can actually help us be better flash photographers. And so when I think about an orange barn, I think about, man, I'm trying to bounce my light and it gets all this like really warm, orangey color bouncing down on my subject. Often it looks something like this, right? This was a test shot I took of my second shooter, Zach, at one of our weddings. And that's what a lot of us get when we try to shoot and bounce our flash in an orange barn. That's not what we want. Nobody wants everybody looking like Oompa Loompas when they fire with their flash. So what do we do? Well, let's equate this to something that we encounter all the time in natural light. Think about when you're out shooting in a big, green, grassy field. What's happening is all the light from the sun is coming down and hitting on the green grass, reflecting its light off the green grass and back onto your subject's skin, giving their skin this weird color casting going on. So how do we solve that? Well, we do a couple things. One, we tend to look for like nice, clean patches of ground, whether it's uh, like a lighter brown dirt or whether it's cement or something like that that's gonna get a more neutral tone for the light to bounce off of and reflect onto our subject's skin. Or we're gonna also potentially grab one of those reflectors. You've seen people get those large round reflectors and they hold the reflector so that the light bounces off the white reflector instead of the green grass and reflects white back onto the subject's face to give a more natural skin tone. The same idea is true when it comes with our flashes. We've got to figure out how do I get something more natural going on in what's reflecting onto my subject. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Number one is we're gonna adjust our Kelvin. So this is interesting because if you think about Kelvin lets you adjust the warmth or the coolness of an image. So what we're gonna do, I find for me, running my Kelvin on my, uh, instead of shooting in auto white balance, I shoot with Kelvin white balance and I run it down to between 3,800 and 4,000 as the temperature. For most venues that are orange barns, this is gonna do the trick. 
put your Kelvin at 3800 to 4000, and then when you bounce your flash, it's gonna have already cooled off all the, all the color that's bouncing off the ceiling uh, before your camera takes it in. And so this gives a nice, much more natural skin tone. I mean, look at this bride right here. Isn't that skin tone so much better than what we saw on Zach a minute ago? Like, that's what we're going for with our images. And simply setting your Kelvin, your white balance, to 3800 to 4000, depending on your venue, can address so much of that concern. The other thing we can do is skip the bounce altogether and shoot direct with our flash. Now, this can create a little bit of a harsher shadow, so I don't recommend it as a first choice option. I always try the bounce with the Kelvin adjustment first, but if you find that because of your venue, you, when you bounce, you still are getting too warm of a, a color cast on their skin tones, bypass the bounce altogether and take that clean white light that's coming out of your flash and point it direct at your subject so that the white light is lighting them up direct. Now your background will still be orange. Yes, it's an orange barn. It's going to be orange. It's going to have some of that. But because you've got white clean light not bouncing off anything before it hits your subject, you're going to love the way your subjects look. So that's my quick flyby on how I shoot orange barn weddings and get amazing skin tones on my subjects. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment in the comment section below this video. Next week, I'll be back with my friend Kayla, and we're going to be talking about how to use gels when shooting with flash. Have you ever wondered why they give you those weird gel looking contraptions to stick on your flash? We're going to hit on that in our next video. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Monday Magic, where we'll help you build your business, wow your clients, and make photo magic.